Hello, people. I believe I'm audible Hello, to people. To you guys. I believe I'm audible to people. Yes, I am. So, system is being checked. Everything is working fine. So, let's start with today's our uh, news analysis. Give me a second. Yes. Okay, let's start with like this only as we are facing some technical difficulties today. Uh, okay, welcome, welcome to One Stop Current Affairs, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Hindi News Analysis. Uh, and I hope you are doing really well, exceptionally well today. Uh, let me just mute it because I can hear my own voice. Yes, so. Uh, as usual, I'm here with you with the, some of the most important news and uh, which are relevant for your UPSC exams. As we have selected these four news items, which are the most important for your UPSC exams. Uh, as we can see here on screen, uh, this is the Sputnik V. As the government may give not to the Sputnik V vaccine, uh, vaccine which is from uh, Russia. Uh, this is a very important. Uh, uh, news because as the COVID cases are on the rise across the country, it becomes very important for all of us to understand that uh, Sputnik V may get very uh, not from the government very soon. So this is the most important news of the day. Then we have the Rafale. Uh, sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, Rafale jets which have been flown down from France to India now uh, some of uh, eight to nine more Rafale jets are likely to come to India so uh, these are the things which are going to take place uh, let me just I can now right so yes uh, I'm so sorry just facing some technical issues today so uh, then uh, this is an editorial piece on the h1b visa uh, as the Bi president Biden has let it expire uh, the, the decision which was taken by the former president to cancel all the H-1B visas basically uh, now Biden has and Biden has to issue basically former president Donald Trump had cancelled to give a new H-1 visas to the people who are uh, trying to attain it and this is a very important visa for those people of uh, who are seeking employment in the US especially uh, the largest beneficiary of this visa is Indian uh, are the Indians and then we have another editorial piece uh, this is the rare diseases uh, which we will see in detail let's go to our first story today that is the Sputnik V uh, it's the most important and vital story of the day as you know that the COVID cases are on the rise right now and it is becoming very difficult for government of India to, uh, uh, to you know, control it as people are out on streets and it's becoming 
a lot of things are becoming uh, 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 not possible for the government to contain right now because a national lockdown is highly unlikely like last year last time last year we had uh, it was during the same time last year which we had uh, it's highly unlikely it's not going to take place this time as a lot of experts have been saying now uh, what is this russian vaccine and how important it can uh, lead uh, india's fight against the coronavirus so uh, let's see what we have here so uh, the covid cases are on the rise as i have already told you that uh, it has crossed a 1 lakh mark in one day this is the first time in this year that it has crossed 1 lakh mark in one day in india uh, highest number of cases registered in one day in 2021 so this is again becoming a bit of problem for everyone you remember last year these uh, cases were on the rise during september from july to september and then the cases uh, the spikes start going down but again it's going up so it's a problem it's a concern for everyone uh, now as already two vaccines are already operational uh, you know that uh, just my retina two vaccines are already op operational that those are uh, covaxin and covishield now uh, let's let's look at here that sputnik v may, we may be cleared for emergency use in india so uh, it's not that it, it it's now right now it's under trial it's under phase 3 trial so it can be cleared for the emergency use in india sputnik v was denied by uh, denied authorization in india it was denied authorization in india you know that sputnik v has been in controversy because it was under phase 2 3 uh, phase 2 and 3 uh, of trials in russia itself when it was uh, authorized when it was uh, administered now it is uh, the, it was also india signed a deal with russia for the sputnik v now uh, the situation has because the covid cases are on the rise once again so it is becoming paramount for india to take necessary steps now why uh, authorization uh, was denied to sputnik v this is very important the dcgi and that that means the director controller general of india uh, that uh, the top body which gives approval to the vaccines sought more data on vaccine stability they wanted more data on sputnik v's uh, efficacy and everything they wanted to be sure before you know, uh, releasing the data and making it for uh, public use. They wanted to make sure that uh, the way the vaccine is stable and people who are using this vaccine uh, should not face any kind of a threat or danger while doing this. So uh, that was the whole idea behind uh, doing this. Uh, now, uh, let's see this. Sputnik V has been allowed by 59 countries for usage so far. So it's... This vaccine uh, has been allowed by 59 countries across the planet uh, for usage. Uh, now, Sp Sputnik V, uh, it's 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 been developed. It's it's really it's developed by Gamalaya Research Institute of Epidemiology and Microbiology by Microbiology developed by Sputnik V. So basically, it's uh, developed by a Russian. Uh, uh, research institute and uh, it, it can be very important this can be an important question for your uh, prelims uh, where you can be asked uh, which organization developed Sputnik V vaccine so please remember this name uh, Gamalaya Research Institute of Epidemiology and Microbiology Sputnik V is a two-dose anti and adenovirus-based vaccine. It's not. It's uh, it's similar to Covaxin and Covishield. Covishield. Uh, this uh, they are the two-dose uh, vaccines. Both are the two-dose vaccines. And uh, uh, the now, now the challenge is to facilitate its storage. Why? It is very challenging to facilitate its storage. Why? 
because the liquid form of vaccine requires to be stored at minus 18 degrees Celsius. So it requires minus 18 degrees Celsius storage facility, which is very important and very vital. Uh, the vaccine would be efficient if it's not stored. It will uh, not remain like it won't be uh, very efficient if it's not stored at minus 18 degrees Celsius. The liquid form of the vaccine and freeze dried version can be stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. Free dried version of the vaccine can be stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. Now, uh, the company which is looking for, uh, which is working as the promoter for Sputnik V is the Russian Direct Investment Fund. Uh, they are looking into all these, uh, the promotion and the aspects of the Sputnik V. Uh, the, the Russian Develop Direct Investment Fund signed a contract with three Indian firms for manufacturing 300 million doses. That means 30 crore. 30 crore. Uh, dosage so uh, it's basically this vaccine will be manufactured at a very large scale in India and 30 crore dosage of this vaccine will be produced in India. Sputnik V is likely to be cleared in the next 7 to 10 days. Uh, Sputnik V has an efficacy of 91%. Now this is something which is very important because uh, the two vaccines which are, are already operational in India, Covishield Sorry. and Covaxin both have an efficacy of 81% so now this is something which is very important to know uh, Sputnik V has an efficacy of 91% so so far, what, what data which has been provided for Sputnik V, it claims that it has an efficacy of 91%, but it is, uh, uh, it is up to the authorities to see what kind of an efficacy it is providing in India. Now, uh, you can see this. This is something which is very important, Covishield. These are the two vaccines which are operational in India and Covaxin. This is uh, Covishield developed by uh, AstraZeneca. A Swedish firm uh, in uh, uh, they were in partnership with the uh, Oxford University and it is being manufactured by India Serum Institute so this is something which is very important for all of us to know uh, uh, Covaxin it's developed by Hyderabad based Bharat Biotech and uh, it is uh, uh, an indigenously developed vaccine and the first Indian vaccine, indigenously developed vaccine to be operationalized for emergency usage in India. So this is something which is very, very important for all of us to know uh, these things. Uh, this is relevant for your prelims examination. Now, uh, let's go and check out some of the details about the COVID shield because it was one of the first vaccines to get operationalized. It is not developed in, uh, uh, in India, uh, but first to get operational nod uh, co-developed by the University of Oxford and British Swedish company AstraZeneca in collaboration with Serum Institute of India COVID shield efficacy is 81.13% if both doses have been administered uh, now, it is something which is very important to know. The uh, Serum Institute Chief Executive Adar Punawala has been nominated for Asian of the Year Award along with six other people. So, Adar Punawala, uh, he's a, uh, a young CEO of the Serum Institute, has been nominated for the Asian of the Year Award. Uh, so, this is something which is very important and once again it is important according to your prelims examination. Covaxin is the second vaccine and the first indigenously vac uh, developed uh, COVID-19 vaccine with an efficacy of 81%. India's first indigenously developed COVID-19 vaccine. So this is very important for you to know this. Uh, developed by Bharat Biotech in collaboration with ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research. Please do not forget about this. This is something which is very important. ICMR you should know. Uh, is Indian Council of Medical Research and National Institute of Virology. 
so uh, this is a vaccine which is done which is being developed in collaboration by the three organizations which is bharat biotech icmr and national institute of virology the vaccine received approval for phase 1 phase 2 human trial from july 2020 it received approval for phase 1 and phase 2 human trial from july 2020 last year received approval from dcg dcgi director controller general of india for use in emergency situation in january 2021 so they received a uh, 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 permission from the uh, dcgi for uh, the uh, emergency use in january 2021 now we'll come to our second story which is the rafal story uh, we have learned now that uh, the another batch of the is rafal jets will reach india in mid may so this is something which is very important uh, and eight to nine planes will complete the first quadrant of the fighters so eight to nine planes will complete the first quadrant of the fighters sorry Yes. So India to receive eight to nine Rafal in mid May. Uh, this is something which is very important for all of us to know that India uh, is going to receive the next batch of Rafal jets. That is around eight to nine Rafal jets in mid May. Uh, the it will not all these Rafal will come together. They will come one by one or two to three aircrafts together, uh, and the delivery will start from April onwards only. Uh, till mid may the delivery of these many aircrafts will be completed so this is uh, uh, the rafal are a very important uh, fourth generation people say it's a 4.5 generation aircraft and it is uh, something which uh, was very important for indian air force they have been uh, wanting this for a very very long time so uh, now let's see what's there also uh, will complete first quadrant of fighters in iaf these uh, the aircrafts when these 8 to 9 aircrafts will arrive they will complete the first quadrant in the in an air force of the rafal jets and uh, with this i think the long capacity and the demand of the rafal jets which is being uh, made by uh, in an air force will be completed so the first quadrant of the rafal jets will be Uh, uh completed uh, with the arrival of these 8 to 9 uh, aircrafts first squadron will have 14 jets it will have 14 jets so this is something which is important for your prelims you should know how many jets will be there so sorry i don't know what's the problem today yes prelims so we'll have 14 jets and it is uh, i have is set to operationize the second rafal squadron at hasimara in west bengal it will be operationalized the second squadron will be operationalized from west bengal's hasimara this is also important for your prelims normally they ask about the first rarely they can ask but you should be aware about these things india and france signed 7.87 billion euros in rafal jet deal in september 2016 so the deal was finally signed after years of negotiation in 2016 the, the negotiations they started around uh, uh, negotiations on rafal 
started around year 2008 and finally it reached to its culmination in 2016. India signed the deal with 13 India-centric enhancements. So the deal, the, the Rafal deal, uh, as it, it has been signed with 13 India-centric enhancements means a lot of things have been added to these Rafals. Uh, it's it's not that uh, the company Dassault, which made the aircraft, uh, gave it as it is. Uh, Indian Air Force demanded certain enhancements in the aircraft, like there is a radar system which has been uh, included in the aircraft, uh, and that radar system is not uh, the French; it is an Israeli radar system. A lot of other features have been included in this, like the 13 Indian centric enhancements. It talks about like the, uh, it talks about that. Uh, it is uh, the first batch of the first five Rafale jets arrived in July 2020. It was during the Galwan crisis. Uh, there was a lot of buzz during those times. So you must have been remembering that. Uh, the first batch, the first batch contained three single seat. And this is and I'm so sorry. And two twin seat aircrafts. Uh, first batch had a stopover at Al Dafra, UAE. So this is something because it, it's the first batch. So I give just information for you so you can remember this. Uh, the first batch of the aircraft were it had a stopover at Al Dafra. It started flying from France, uh, accompanied by French Air Force refuelers. Uh, uh, till UAE uh, and post which uh, in an Air Force refuelers uh, from UAE uh, they brought Rafale to the Ambala Air, Air Base where, where it was finally inducted in the Air Force. And the second squadron will be ready by 2023. Second squadron of Rafale jets will be ready by 2023. So why Rafale is so deadly and why it is considered to be in a deadly aircraft? A lot of people say it's because it's a 4th generation aircraft but a lot of experts say it's a 4.5 generation aircraft. Uh, I'm so sorry, once again my pen has stopped working. So it's a so four point five generation aircraft, which experts believe. Uh, can operate from aircraft carrier it can easily operate from aircraft carrier and shore base so uh, this is there it can carry uh, operate from both aircraft carriers and shore base uh, India has an aircraft carrier uh, and shore bases of course from the ground uh, aircraft carrier it's the, the, the uh, a ship which carries aircraft, so that is called aircraft carrier for those students who are a uh, little confused about what aircraft carrier is. Uh, now the combat range of this aircraft is 780 to 1650 kilometers, which is huge because in uh, India's uh, standpoint, if you are looking at, uh, it is very tactical because India has a policy of not, uh, or, or India has never been an aggressor it has been uh, uh, it has always maintained that it will not attack anyone first uh, and it will defend its borders so for india uh, india looked for an aircraft which has a combat range where it can damage uh, uh, you know level a susceptible, sus susceptible amount of damage to the enemy's uh, aircrafts or uh, their uh, fighter jets so this is something which is very important uh, 
Now, Rafale has a Meteor beyond visual range air to air missiles powered by Ramjet engines for a range over 120 to 150 kilometers at max four speed. So, this is something which you should know that basically you must have seen in a lot of films that uh, there's a when whenever there is an air to air combat between aircrafts, so the flights come and they you know uh, target each other with missiles. So, this uh, Rafale has come out with this BVRAM, as in, sh in short form we call it, Beyond Visual Range Air-to-Air -air Missiles. So basically when uh, there is an air-to-air dogfight or a combat, uh, Rafale has this uh, great advantage because it has this BVRAM missile uh, which has a range of uh, 120 to 150 kilometers. So it can foresee its enemy coming and it can also mm -hmm. target it from this range, so this is very important. Has a scout air to ground cruise missiles that can hit targets well over 300 kilometers. So uh, it has this air to ground uh, missile scout uh, which can target air to ground, uh, which can hit targets uh, uh, up to 300 kilometers. And you remember the Balakot, uh, it, was, uh, it was the Indian Air Force which used their Mirage 2000 to target the terror launch pad of Jaish Muhammad. So, uh, you know, Indian Air Force can use these uh, Rafale jets to target these uh, terror terror launch paths uh, along the line of action, line of control, and uh, they can level huge damage to these terror outfits. Now, Indian Air Force uh, still needs 400 aircrafts. There is a lot of paucity of aircrafts. India needs a lot of aircrafts to fulfill their demands of the squadrons. There is a lot of paucity. Uh, uh, I have requested them fast to rebuild their 42 squadrons. India needs 42 squadrons. That was the demand of Indian Air Force very, very long time. As its fleet is getting old, uh, it needs to replace MiG-21s, MiG-29s and Mirage 2000. It needs to replace all these aircrafts. Currently, IAF has, ha IF, IAF has uh, 32 squadrons, Indian Air Force has 32 squadrons. This is a matter of grave concern. A lot of pol things have been uh, are responsible for this uh, paucity of aircrafts. There's a lacklusterness in the policy making, uh, uh, and a lot of things have been there. Now we come to the A Walk Back. This is an editorial piece written. Uh, in the Hindu today. Uh, it is about the rare diseases and the policy which has been uh, 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 brought in by the government. Now something which is very important. Uh, sorry, this is, we talk about this walk back. So this is basically Biden uh, administration's, uh, Biden shows intent on reworking immigration rules by not extending H-1B visa ban. So this is uh, basically a walk back from President Trump's proclamation where he uh, stopped all the H-1B visas. So uh, this is President Biden trying to rectify those steps taken by President Trump, the former President Trump. Uh, President Joe Biden allowed a ban on issuance of H-1B visa for skilled workers to lapse in March 2021. So this was his election promise. This was he said this during his uh, poll campaign. Why H-1B visa is so important and why it was so making so much buzz in India, we'll see uh, ahead. But just remember these things that H-1B visa is specifically important for Indians. Uh, it is uh, a lot of in software developer software. IT professionals from India go to US and seek employment and seek work permit in under this H-1B visa. Uh, Biden fulfilled his campaign promise. He fulfilled his campaign promise. That was his campaign promise that he will allow uh, people to attain H-1B visas. Uh, Biden move is going to have a great impact on Indians uh, as 70% of Indians seek visa under this H-1B, uh, Indians were the largest to benefit from H-1B visas. Up to 2,000, 2,900,000 2, 
219,000 visa applications were blocked by Donald Trump. So these many applications were blocked by President Trump and this was something, a matter of great concern. Uh, a lot of things were under stress and especially between India and the US at that point of time. Uh, Indian IT services exported to the US totaled uh, $29 billion in 2019. So a lot of companies like TCS are there in the US and they, uh, they used to import like that. They used to send their IT professionals uh, to the US uh, uh, and uh, uh, like the, they exported around 29 billion dollars like basically this was the amount of uh, services which was provided to the US by Indian IT service uh, by Indian IT company uh, Indian IT services uh, CEOs of the tech giant protested against Donald Trump's move a lot of like the Google CEO from the Pichai, he protested against this move from President Trump. Uh, uh, they were irked with clampdown on key labor driving their core operations. Basically, Indians and these tech, these techies, IT professionals from India were the key labor. They were the core. Uh, they were the key labor who used to handle their core operations. So. A lot of companies' core operations got affected because of it. Uh, a lot of companies hire Indians because they are efficient, uh, they uh, do a lot of work, they are more uh, capable of doing uh, uh, good uh, lot of work and they have high thinking, knowledge and everything. Uh, so Biden recognizes that there are limits to Trumpian, Trumpian dogma of economic protectionism so now it is also important to understand that he also understands, President Biden also understands that what Trump did was not something which was all of a sudden. He did that because there was a chorus within the US uh, of protectionism as a lot of professionals from across the planet visit US, get jobs, and a lot of native US citizens aren't able to get any jobs there. So this is something which was very problematic. And Biden understands it and he realizes it that if, <coughs> if uh, uh, he has to uh, sustain his tenure and make a lot of credible uh, impact within the mindset of people and those people who have not supported Trump in the last election, in the 2020 elections, he has to make sure that there is economic growth and a lot of Americans get jobs. So the balance of immigration policies can be maintained. Biden has clearly not forgotten 74 million votes from Mr. Trump. As I told you that his vote share, Mr. Trump's vote share, it increased to 74 million. Uh, it increased and it reached around 74 million and uh, a lot of people say that currently the United States is the most divided country in the world because a lot of support Trump supporters are still uh, you know uh, they they they're crazy about him they uh, they think about him day and night and they um, uh, they call the last elections forged uh, and they have a lot of uh, grievances against the de democrats uh, and a lot of things are there but uh, still, he, uh, Mr. Biden, uh, was democratically elected, and uh, uh, when he came to power, he came with a uh, with uh, with a lot of you know uh, claiming that he will bring sanity back to uh, U.S. policy. Uh, he will step aside from U.S. protectionism. He will uh, take America once again to the mainstream. He will uh step aside from the protectionism from the isolation which america has entered during the president trump's tenure so all these things were there uh biden will be unwise to reject the america first ideology he has no choice but he has to make sure that uh, the native americans uh, also uh, get the benefits of the economic growth and he cannot afford to you know, move away from uh, this America first ideology. Biden pushed to push gradual reforms to nudge US economy. 
he understand that he has to push gradual reforms to you know bring back us economy bring uh, take it to, to its own glory uh, those reforms will position you back to multilateral cooperation it will only uh, push uh, back us to the multilateral cooperation and uh, basically what as i told you earlier that uh, president trump isolated once again followed the policy of isolation and he was more us centric policy was designed more us centric policies so uh, president biden will take us to much more multilateral cooperations believes in much more multilateral cooperations which will enhance uh, the growth of the united states what trump did exactly so uh, former president trump issued a presidential proclamation announcing his decision to suspend covid foreign work visa such as h1 h1b h4 and h2b visa it created a lot of uproar uh, uh, these uh, he stopped all these uh, foreign work uh, covid foreign work visas and uh, it created a lot of problems for the tech engineers uh, the techies uh, the mba professionals who were residing in the united states h4 visa issued to the immediate family members of the h1b visa holder this is this also became a problem because a lot of h1b visa holder family members who applied through h4 were not allowed what not given this visa decision was aimed to protect american workers who lost jobs due to covid-19 it was a decision taken for american workers to put to who lost their jobs in covid-19 so h1 visa h1 b visa is very popular among indian it companies uh, like tcs wipro all, all these uh, infosys uh, issued for a period of 3 to 6 years this visa issued for a period of 3 to 6 years given to people in special in specialty occupation like uh, basically if they are techies Yeah, to IT professionals, these visas are visas are given to them. Total number of H one B visas issued annually is eighty five thousand. So these many visas and H one B visas are issued annually. And Indian workers receive about seventy percent of these work permits. They receive like seventy percent of Indians receive this work permit. Now we come to the good start. Uh, uh it is about the rare disease uh, policy which is being brought by government of india uh is something for people who are suffering from rare diseases uh this is something which is very vital and important uh because in india now covid has as covid has exposed a lot of uh, medical uh, lapses like la- problems in the medical infrastructure in the country how government can come out uh, and bring out more inclusivity in the society through their schemes so this is uh, a new scheme which has been brought by government of india let's see what it is exactly and what the editorial is about so first we start with the editorial rare disease a good start basically a good start is the name of the uh, is the uh, header of the editorial piece so written notification of the national policy for rare diseases and the 21 is based on principal exclusion so this is the national policy for rare diseases there is a recent re- notification which has been released and it is based on principle of inclusion it's not to you know not to leave anyone behind the entire policy is designed in a way that uh, it not only deals with only uh, big time diseases or big illnesses uh, it also disease it also you know uh, deals with rare diseases which are very rare in uh, society which only few limited number of people have uh, offers financial support for treatment up to 20 lakhs it was previously 15 lakhs now it was after a lot of interventions from the courts and ngos and all these the policy uh, the, the the financial support now offered by the government is up to 20 lakhs policy even introduced crowd funding mechanism previously it wasn't there Uh, now uh, the, the the government can actually uh, you know they can uh, go ahead for crowdfunding they can ask people for money 
for those people who are suffering from serious uh, rare disease ailment and in requirement of a lot of money for treatment. Uh, WHO has said that 6.5 to 10 per thousand for 10,000 people have rare diseases. So this is a huge number. Uh, it might sound, it might not sound like that, but this is a huge number and it's a problem. So imagine 70 million people, 70 million patients with rare diseases are, are there in India. Means 7 crore people have rare diseases in India. What are those rare diseases? They have a list of those diseases which are given, being given by the government of India. Uh, now the writer argues that the policy fell short of delivering the complete mandate. The he's, uh, the writer still believes that the policy is still not complete. The national policy for uh, rare diseases is still not complete. It leaves behind, it has several shortfalls uh, and it has not taken everything into consideration. Uh, no funding has been allocated to immediate and lifelong treatment needs. Uh, there has been no funding which is being allocated to uh, 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 immediate, like if a person requires immediate treatment or uh, someone who requires lifelong treatment, no funding has been allocated to them, which is a problem. Uh, cost to help already diagnosed patients will cost uh, 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 around 100 to 800, uh, 80 to 100 crores. So already diagnosed patients were there, uh, according to experts, this cost, is, it will it will go around 80 to 100 crores. Government of India, benef uh, exchequer has to spend around 80 to 100 crores on the people who has been diagnosed with rare diseases. Centre should try and work out cost sharing agreement with states. States, like they have already worked out these cost sharing uh, agreements with uh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka they should try and you know uh, reach Karnataka they should try and reach an agreement with other states as well patient with rare diseases will be eligible for one time treatment under Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Yojana so basically this is the policy this is the scheme that someone who is uh, who has a rare disease will be eligible for one time treatment under Pradhan Mantri Ayushman Bharat under Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana this is one of the world's biggest Ayushman Bharat one of the world's biggest uh, health uh, scheme by a government. Uh, it is a lot of people call it Modi Care as well. Uh, uh, and uh, this is one of the shortfalls which we, we have talked previously that this policy only allows you to have one time treatment under this Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana. It does not provide you uh, for. Uh, long-term treatment or for immediate treatment. Beneficiaries will not be limited to below poverty line families. Uh, so do not think that only BPL families will be the beneficiaries of this policy. There are other families also who will be uh, beneficiary with this policy. It will be extended to 40% of the population eligible as per 23 norms of Pradhan Mandri Janaro B. Yojana will be extended to 40% of the population. So, not only the below poverty line people, but people who have rare diseases uh, and those 40% will be identified according to the 23 norms given in the Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana. Policy specifies increasing, increasing government support for treating patients with a rare disease from 15 to 20 lakh. As I told earlier, that's, it was previously it was 15 lakhs. Now it has been increased to 20 lakhs. The policy categorizes rare diseases in three groups. So one is disorders amenable to one-time curative treatment. 
disorders which are uh, which can be cured in one uh, one time so uh, patients requiring long term or lifelong treatment uh, those patients which are going to have long treatments disease for which definitive treatment is available and those diseases will be covered for which definitive treatment is available so this is the hindu news analysis for today thank you my name is rahul pandey you can uh, contact me on the number which has been given below for this ppt you can also uh, contact me on the mail id which has been given below uh, uh, we will join you tomorrow at 8:30 in the morning thank you so much for watching the one stop current affairs uh, the hindu news analysis uh, we will keep trying and keep uh, you know extending your knowledge for the civil uh, for the civil services keep keep preparing uh, keep thriving keep working hard this is all pandey signing off thank you so much